for 2021. Total Energy's 24 hours of spa is about to get underway. The cars accelerate out of La Source. The lights will go green. We will go racing. Mercedes versus Lamborghini. We're in business. It is blast off at Spa. Downhill they go, and it's Rafael Marcello who grabs the advantage. Mirko Bortolotti slots in second. It's Luca Stoltz who goes third. And then fourth, David Pittard in the BMW. Everybody so far cleanly through a rouge up rally on for the first time, but a great start by Marcello. And everybody got through radio and up the long camel straight. It was Raffaele Marcio. Look, even weaving around, trying to get more temperature into his Pirelli tyres. But down the inside, Peter looks to have a go on getting past Marcello. Decides the wiser of it, backs out of it. But I think Mirko Bortolotti realised I'd just be a little bit cautious in this opening lap, not make an issue going into Eau Rouge or Radio. Pittard, the biggest gainer, at least at the front in the early going, able to jump up a couple of spots, slots in to the third position. Side by side, the CMR Bentley. We've got the Garage 59, Aston to the outside, jumping on board now with, well, just in the middle of the traffic. This is the 93 Ferrari we're on board with. Chris Froggett behind the wheel at the moment. It is a traffic jam around Spa, two by two, just like Noah's Ark. Downhill they had there for the first time. This is through Paul. They've all been relatively well behaved thus far, he says, finding wood to touch. Although there, look, getting a bit of a squeeze. That was the Ram Racing Mercedes being forced up to the curb on the inside, but they've all survived the opening lap so far. One runs wide in the background, but Rafael Marchiello is trying to build the gap, and we've got a damaged Porsche already. Fred Makovici's car with the mirror hanging off. Yeah, well, that'll have to be attended to as soon as possible. That will other drop off and become a hazard or that will be called in. Car I'm going to keep an eye on at the end of this opening lap is where is the 32 ID, the WRT ID that was utterly and completely wrong footed. Kelvin van der Linde behind the wheel so come the end of this lap he started back at the 28th row of the grid, 27th row of the grid 54th position, wonder where he'll be. Well he's hustling on right enough isn't he? Here they come then up towards the end of the opening lap then so the timing data will be as they cross the timing line. David Pittard there breaks a little bit late for the chicane, scrabbles into it, caught the slide, but that was almost a big mistake at the end of the opening lap. So David then hangs onto it as the cars come through the chicane now. Some run wide up the curb, but Marcello leads at the end of lap one. Bortolotti is second, Pittard is third, Stoltz there looking the Pink Panther, Mercedes fourth, out of Ben Barnico fifth, and very nearly getting into the back of the big BM. Luca Stoltz is on a mission. Now one, whoa, 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 big moment. That's Froggart who's lost it coming through the chicane. Chris Froggart has spun it. Got up on the curb, I think, didn't he? And that just unsettled the car. And he'd also uh, been involved on the opening lap in an incident with the number 70 Jordan Pepper McLaren. But Chris Froggart there has an early spin. Don't think the car's got much damage, but he carries on. But that certainly delayed him. Now there are the race leaders. Where does that put Chris Froggart? 55th out of 58 at the end of the lap. Race leader, Raffaele Marcello, still on slick tyres, slithers, oh. slithers, slithers, overshoots. Can he get back on the racetrack? Look at the same for Bortolotti and look, come Lettergaard, the lead three cars all go skating. Now, Marcello's come in. There's Bortolotti, yeah, they're yeah. all three deciding they have to come They've in. They've got to, they've got to. That is the weirdest line ever, isn't it, to come into the pit lane through the chicane. But inevitable the car uh, there are more at it look who was fourth uh, because uh, there more of them just run out of grip Mathieu Jaminet is in and there's a spinning Audi that's arrived on the scene but quickly hooks a gear and gets going and there are more going up the escape road it's not that there's oil on the road it's just that there's so much water and they're on slicks yeah well it's standing water on the braking area as they come into turn 18 and that's what caught look another car just about oh, to come oh, across oh. the inside wow and gathers it up that one of the That's Aston Martin. It is, and there's a spin there, which might be another Aston Martin. Crikey. Well, you can see the corner, the braking marker zones, those have been hammered and trapped with them. Well, one of them has, certainly. Yeah. But you, so don't the, want to, you don't want to be parked there for too long, do you? Not at all. Well, you don't want to be parked anywhere around a racetrack when cars are literally just skating around. Now, what can Chiva do at the moment? Not a lot, because he can't attack, he's got to defend. And again, here's a situation of knowing which battles to pick. As there, two wheels on the grass. Nicky Team in the pro Aston Martin gets past the Pro-Am Ferrari. Well, you could argue that was a bit unnecessary on both parts, but there is a Pro-Am car that's in its own race. Didn't have to be fighting the Aston Martin. And off the road now goes Eddie Chiva, so he's all flustered because of that, but that could have ended badly. Nicky Team, though, with absolute mega commitment. He must have what the size of space hoppers to do that, because that demanded massive bravery. So up the hill we come, watch and see, look behind Mirko Bortolotti, we've got a little bit of back markers to sort out. Up the inside he goes, 
did a repeat, a repeat. But look, can the Rob Bell get back? Because he had maybe the slightly better exit out side by side as they come down the hill. No space between the McLaren and the Lamborghini. Here we go. Bordelotti can't hold on to the spot. Bell able to fight back around the outside. Bordelotti backs out of it, but it's not done yet. Cresting the hill. Three cars fighting for second, third, and fourth overall. As there, Alessandro Pierre Guidi is the new race leader. He has got himself up past Marco Mapelli. So, as the stint comes to an end within really the last three laps of the stint, finally, Alessandro Pierre Guidi has made it stick. And this is how he did it, Ryan. Look at that the headlights looming large. Ah, traffic playing a factor. Oof. And that was more than just looming large. That looks like contact. That looks like diffuser damage, damage to me. Yeah. And I wonder about the splitter on the Ferrari. And how much is that going to have an impact now? The aero slightly distorted at the rear of the Lamborghini, but how close was that? Slicing the diffuser to an extent, just trimming it, and then round the outside through Le Corme. Forced off the road was Pierre Guidi, but he was having none of that. Elbows out, back through on the inside. So on lap 108, we have a new race leader, and it's as frantic as anything. And look, having got through, he's away and gone. He was half a second clear when they came over the line. And he's building that margin nicely as they come down through Brussels. Oh, Ooh. there's your AM leading Porsche that's got scooped up with 31 Valdemar Ericsson at the chicane. And the leading AM Porsche ain't going very far. That's going to bring out yellow flags. And that's going to mean that those cars need to get going quickly, but neither look in any hurry. Oh, dear, Dennis Bush in 166 reversing. There's 40 going for its drive-through. That gets out of the way. So Dennis Bush has reversed and actually made things a little bit worse in all of this because he can't get going now. Yes, he can, finally. Phew, drama's over. So, well, uh, yeah, that was all a bit I interesting. A little bit of action. And has the traffic been an impediment to Van Thor? Not much. The gap is down by another tenth. And a big drama there. That's your Am Cup leader off the road, Nicky Leutweiler. He's gone off the road up at the top of Radiant. So 23, Nicky Leutweiler off the road. That's going to bring out the full course yellow. And all of a sudden, this is going to shuffle things around, isn't it? This might have played into the hands of the Ferrari because we're expecting it in this time. Full course yellow in 10 seconds. Here's the replay. That's Nicky Leutweiler. He's got it wrong, hasn't he? Coming through a rouge and it's all wrong uh, coming up Radiant. And that's a big, big hit back and front into the barriers. The only good news, if you like, is that he did that on his own and didn't involve anybody else. And Nick Tandy, who was uh, behind the big accident at the start of the race and went the right way, was behind that one as well and went the right way. So good news for Nick on both occasions. So they blast up hill again. This is where we saw Calderelli a lap ago, trying to get close enough to have a go, and he is this time. And there's the gap on the inside. Is this it for sixth place? Yes, Calderelli goes through. Andrea Calderelli, after many a lap of fighting, has finally done it. He gets past number 47, Porsche. Calderelli goes sixth. Tandy falls to seventh. So this was the chicane. Very late, he commits. He makes the dive, but he just can't slow down. He can't, and he then does the thing that he could have been penalised for had he gained an advantage. So there's the Lamborghini up the inside. Tandy doesn't fight that one. And the Lamborghini perhaps inevitably goes by. Look at the gaps, the way they've been just taking long sort of come let it go over 1.1 seconds on lap 452. Now, will Ferrari decide to keep come let it go in the car or will they replace him or I'm sure I'm sure that WRT are going to keep Dries van Thor behind the wheel for as long as they they possibly can Nicholas Nielsen has found himself in a difficult situation because he's trapped with the back markers and his natural pace again wipers going look round the outside what's going on the Audi trying to find a way through has the Audi taken the lead over the curb he is taking the lead but he's overrun the circuit get back on don't try and shortcut it let the Ferrari go ahead, you will, that's it, he's given back the lead. Wow, that was all because of a number of cars with the race leader in the middle of them, not knowing where to go. But I tell you what, Kelvin Ladder, Linda saw the opportunity, but just couldn't slow the Audi down sufficiently to make the turn in, cut behind the apex of the corner and immediately get out of the throttle, let the Ferrari once again take the lead. But... He is behind the Ferrari and there's still further traffic up ahead of Nicholas Nielsen.
That was seven different cars from three different classes, all converging in the same quarter, fighting their own battles. But the battle at the front of the field is this one. Nicholas Nielsen making the pass of the lapped Ferrari right there from out of class. Kelvin Vanderlinde giving chase in the 32 Audi. This is what was potentially a race leading overtake. Kelvin Vanderlinde has to drive off track and as a consequence, that's why he didn't slow down. A small amount of moisture on the track contributed to it. But look what's happening. The 32 gets up alongside, then the Mercedes in. Twice in a lap, that car's been involved in controversial issues. I'll say no more. Silence speaks volumes sometimes. Look how wild this was. You could see the raindrops on the windshield. You know the grip level isn't there. And if there's a place that has no grip in the wet, it's certainly in the grass. That's where Kelvin Vanderlinde had his two left side wheels. Number 32, then Dries Van Thor gets a new set of tyres and wet tyres going on to the Audi. So WRT with nothing to lose really now, thinking that the rain is going to come and they need to be well placed for it. So this could be the move that wins. It could be the move that leaves them with egg on their faces. But 32 Audi then goes on to wets. If this shower doesn't come, they're going to be certainly red faced. But out on wet tyres goes Dries Van Thor. This could be the move of the race. The rain is falling at Spa. 50 minutes of the race to go. The leader has gone on to slicks and the second place car has gone on to wets and the rain is getting heavy. The rain is coming down. That is the car that's on slick tires. The Iron Lynx Ferrari with under an hour to go, tiptoes round. Is it gonna bail? Is it gonna stay out? What weather information does the Italian team have at its disposal? They would be sitting beside WRT. They would have understood what they've done. They didn't do it just because it was a roll of the dice. They did it because they understood the weather. They've got to see, I suspect, that the Ferrari, the Porsche comes in. Ferrari, no! Oh. Alessandro Piaguidi has decided to brave it out. That is a, well, a massive roll of the dice. Everybody's rolling the dice here. It's like being in Las Vegas. That is a big risk. Well, that capital risk, isn't it? Underlined in red ink. That car tiptoes on, but it's going to be losing masses of time to the wet, shod Audi. And well, there is drama now. That might change things completely because off the road has gone 911 and more of them on slick tyres arrive. Three, four cars involved. Now, potentially, full course yellow will come. And look, there's another car off the road there heading towards the barrier. The 50 Mercedes slews sideways. There's another Ferrari pirouetting. The yellow flags wave. And Alan Adam is going to have to make a call in a moment. The yellow flags are there. And cars get away from the scene of the crime, diving for the pit lane. Well, the road clears itself. Everybody's got the chance to back off, except another Mercedes spins into the bus stop chicane. The drivers have the ability and the teams will be shouting on the radio, go slow, go slow. And that's the leader who's barely going to make the corner. Pierre Guidi tiptoes around. He just gets away with it. That's the pit lane shot. Look how wet it is. But they're all coming in for wet tyres. So right now, Dries Van Thor on wets is in the box seat here at Spa. As there we see Dries Van Thor, who is on those wet weather tyres. We queried the decision of WRT to do this, but they had the weather up. Look, bring that car in now. There must be at least an inch of water. As, look, the puddles as well. I've always wanted to cover powerboat racing. Here it is then. So in paddles the Ferrari, and Iron Lynx looks as though it is going to be denied because of the weather, and you can never rule out WRT. There is Vanthor. Look at the way the gap had come down anyway, but now the Audi is going to get the race lead, and this has got to be an absolutely electric pit stop from Iron Lynx, but the weather looks like it's going to thwart them of a chance of a win. Can you believe it? Full course yellow is called for. That's because of a car in a dangerous place more than the conditions. You might argue the conditions have been the catalyst for the car being off the road, but it's not just the rain that has triggered this. It is uh, a car stranded on the circuit. And of course, if anybody else were to hit that, then we'd be in real, real trouble. It was up at the top of the watch and see the watch coming down the hill. Look at this. So, look at the toboggan. Wow, how it got away with it. Did it clip the barrier? It's not his a thing. I think he might have just skimmed the barrier. Oh, oh he did, he hit it. Really? Oh, maybe just a very minor part. That was the wow. inception of McLaren. Oh, it didn't pile into the barrier. Now cars coming in behind. I, honestly, oh. I'm, not, I'm not persuaded. Oh. Look at that. Oh. Brendan Areeb at the wheel of the McLaren. Whatever that was in the spray that missed him was uh, pretty masterful. So, Brendan Areeb, welcome to Spa. That was quite a moment. But he comes over the line now. And as it 
breaks the timing beam officially. Now we've got 32 as the race leader. And it, uh, a big round of applause from WRT. Well, it was either going to be egg on face or champagne spray at the end of the 24 hours. And right now, you have to say the champagne is the favourite. Maybe it was all this, never mind apps or technology. Good old fashioned Raindale. That, that's what did it. Green flag, green flag. As we go racing here at Spa, 28 minutes just under remain. Up out of the chicane comes Dries Van Thor. He floors the throttle as best he can in these conditions, and away he goes. And this gives him an opportunity to build the lead as he comes down towards La Source. But they've got to get round the hairpin safely. They've got to get through a Rouge and up Radion safely. And remember, Dries Van Thor's on the bubble. One more track limit abuse, and he'll be having a drive through. That's right, he's on four, Pierre Guidi is on three, and this is the view from number 70, Jordan Pepper, at the helm of the Inception Racing McLaren as Van Thor builds that gap downhill, finds a little bit of traction, he's OK, he gets through safely, but look at those, like Pierre Guidi in the spray ride, it's hell on wheels! But right now, it is still game on, isn't it, as Pierre Guidi has got this gap down, John, to 2.1 seconds! Yes, he's coming, he's coming, and 16 minutes, Who's, what's going to come first? The overtake or the clock running down. They are nose to tail, and right now, the Ferrari is all over the Audi like a fat pigeon on a chip. We've been racing since half past four yesterday. Nine and a half minutes to go, side by side. On the outside line is the Ferrari, and Pierre Guidi's going to do it. Right round the outside, he's got the drive, he's got the momentum, and he's got the bravery. Alessandro Pierre Guidi leads at Spa. Fantastic move. Move of the day, delight at Iron Links. Alessandro Pierguini, you are a hero! Outstanding piece of driving by both drivers. Look at the Audi pit, absolutely shell-shocked by what they've just seen. Alessandro Pierguini took that opportunity. He knew he had to nail the Audi at their first opportunity. He had a little sniff up at Lecum on this lap, but he got it done. How brave can you be? Went round the outside with Dries Van Thor in full-on combative race mode, and he made it stick. Talk about respect between two drivers to make this work. Yeah, this is tough because on the inside, Van Thor had the initial advantage, but around the long way around the outside, to some degree, Van Thor realized that Pierre Greedy wasn't going to give up. And he maybe had to back out of it a little bit to ensure that there wasn't contact between the two cars. The first Ferrari win since 2004, the biggest win for Iron Lynx as a team. Its first GT World Challenge Endurance Cup win its first intercontinental gt challenge win the checkered flag at the ready the total energy is 24 hours of spa for 2021 is won by ferrari by comle de gar nicholas nielsen and alessandro Pierguini, who comes across the line the hero of the hour an outstanding drive an outstanding team effort dries van thor comes through second the gap at the flag 3.9 seconds so near and yet so far and it is joy unconfined, isn't it, in the Iron Lynx pit bunker. What a race. Let's have a look at the provisional results then of the Total Energies 24 Hours of Spa for 2021. Come Ledegar, Nicholas Nielsen, and that man, Alessandro Pierguidi, win from Dries Van Thor, Kelvin van der Linde and Charles Witt. The gap 3.978 seconds ahead of Nicky Tim, Ross Gunn and Marco Sorensen third. Iron Lynx, Ferrari, win at Spa. Come Ledegar, Nicholas Nielsen and Alessandro Pierguidi, the race winners.